Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. The fear you can hear. Just mention the word swamp and cold settles in the bones. The dampness runs through the veins like slime. And the thought of the brooding, clawing miasma lingers in the nostrils, scented, decaying, conjuring in the mind visions of things that slide and slip and slither in the night. Who's that? Where are you? What is it? Where are you? From the Swamp was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Jack Grimes and Joan Loring. A young game and fish warden named Larry Drake, who for reasons of his own lived an isolated hermit's life in the heart of the Great Swamp, was returning after dark in a wild thunderstorm to his lonely cabin. Just as he approached the cup-shaped body of quicksand and swamp water called... Oh, but uh, since this is his story, and he left a painfully careful and detailed record, why not let him tell it for himself? I'm typing this before I do what I have to do. Because I know the sheriff must be on his way for me by now. This is the end of what began seems a lifetime ago. But I reckon it's only a few days. The weather was foul. And as I started to skirt the edge of the devil's cauldron, I heard the sound of a woman crying. I broke through the undergrowth, and in a flash of lightning, I saw her for the first time trapped waist deep in a slime and sinking fast. Try to stay still! The more you flounder, the more you sink. Leave me. Save yourself. I'm not in any danger. Now, neither are you if you do as I say. Yeah, grab the end of this tree branch. You feel yourself, too. Let's not fuss over me. Concentrate on you. Grab the branch. That's it. Now, pull it towards you till you get the main step. All right, now listen. I'm not worth your saving. We'll talk about that later. Now, go on. Grab it. Pulled you out of the swamp. My name's Larry Drake. Up uh, here, I, I brought you some soup. It's so dark in here. It's the middle of the night. Don't you have any light? Just a gas lantern in the other room. Oh. Here, I'll set this down the table by the bed. Can't you bring the lantern in here? I'd rather not. You have enough light to see. I want to look at you. Why? I want to see the man who had enough courage to risk his life for me. I don't really think you would. Does it matter all that much? No. Who are you? I told you, Larry Drake. What were you doing by the devil's cauldron? 
coming home. You live here? Yep. <laughs> if you call it living. Why? I mean, what do you do? Oh, I'm a fish and game warden. You see, right here smack in the middle of the Great Swamp is the last colony of great hooping spoonbills in the world. It's my job to uh, try to keep them living. The blind leading the blind, or the damned trying to preserve the damned. I don't quite understand you. No, I suppose not. See, the spoonbill and me, we're just the same kind of species, right out of Mr. Darwin. What does that mean? <laughs> we don't seem to fit our environment. Oh, that makes me sort of a thing. Well, now I don't understand you. It doesn't matter. Who, who are you? My name is Udine. That's all? Just Udine? <laughs> I like the way you say it. That's all. Okay. I don't want to pry. Uh, what were you doing way out here at the end of the world? I was trying to escape. Run away? If you want to call it that. From home? The swamp man. The, the who? He lives at the bottom of the devil's cauldron. There are only holes where his eyes ought to be. And his hair is made of Spanish moss. His shoulders are knotted with muscles, and his hands can span a wagon wheel. He has no legs, only a great long trunk with one huge foot like a giant clam that grips the rock at the bottom with a suction no one can break. And he lives on those who are foolish enough to walk the swamp by night. With his hands, he draws them down, down beneath the green slime and shifting black sand. Oh, you've had a bad scare. You need to rest. You should have left me. Now you're lost, too. Oh, what a storm. Devil's out walking tonight. Uh, <laughs> even, Sheriff. Uh, ain't had a spring like this since 53. He... Who's that there stretched out on the cedar side? Oh, that Bubba James and some riffraff friend of his and runs a still with him. Pass out cold. <laughs> but they brung in some powerful tasty corn like it. Could you use a shot against the cold? <laughs> you wouldn't have to twist my arm, Jeb. I always said you run the best store in Carteret. What? <laughs> the only one. Yeah. <laughs> Guess you ain't doing much business today, Jeb. No, no. Powerful slow. Damn, I meant to tell you right off. Guess who blew in again just before dark? Who? Larry Drake. Larry? Thought you said he'd come in yesterday to stock up for the month. Oh, he did. He come back again today all the way from the swamp? He, he did. Well, how come? Well, he wanted some more supplies and uh, uh, a female dress and other such things. What? You think he's finally getting over... Barbara Jane. Well, figure it out for yourself. Well, how'd he look? Well, that's hard to say. No different, I guess, than he ever will. But why didn't he stay in the hospital and have that face fixed? Oh, I reckon after what happened, he just plain didn't care. Uh, looks like maybe he might now. You mean old Turtle Skin Drake got himself shacked up with some woman? Well, doggone Bubba, I thought you was cold turkey. <laughs> You only got to mention a woman around old Bubba and he's awake. Now, you lay off, Larry Drake. He's had enough trouble for his lifetime without having to carry you on his back. I'd just like to see what kind of woman old bacon-faced Larry Drake could get to look at him twice. <laughs> you uh, reckon you can sleep now, wouldn't I? You're going to leave me, right? Bring the lantern. Why? I want to look at you. Very well. Maybe it's best. I'm shading this light. I wouldn't want you to turn away from me. Uncover it. Let me see. All right. Oh, poor Larry. What happened? 
I had the world in my pocket, you know. I was going to be married to Barbara Jane, who everybody said would be next Miss America. We were golden boy and golden girl. Wasn't it Byron who said, whom the gods love die young? Uh, I got myself all licked up at a party two nights before the wedding and insisted on driving home. We went off the road and into a ditch. I was thrown clear, but she was trapped in the car. I tried to get through the flames to her, but she was burned to a crisp. As you can see, there wasn't much more left of me. It... Except I lived. Your poor, poor face. If they wanted to fix it, I suppose it could have been made better, but I had no money and less interest. I want you to go to the swamp and bring me water from the cauldron and mud from the edge. What for? I'll show you. I, I don't want to leave you now. I wouldn't let you leave me now. You can only go by daylight. He can only come out of the swamp by night. The swamp man? Yes. I'm not afraid of him. I'll go now. No, no, please. Larry, don't. Stay with me. Stay with me. Come. Hold me in your arms. <laughs> What, what, what is it? Are you ill? I'm afraid, Larry. I'm only afraid. He came for me once before. On a night like this. Before I was... You see... He needs the dance. And the whip. Because he can't walk. He has to crawl like a snake. Please... Please, hold me. Hold me. Hold me. Bob. Do you know what I'm talking about? To be warm again. To feel you. Dry. And smooth. I. What? Hug. No. What? He's coming for me. He's coming to take me back. It's the swamp man. What creatures of the night the mind can form. What faceless horror that creep and crawl and drag themselves out of the imagination into the world we think safe. Is the sound Larry and Udine strain to hear some unimaginable creature born from the murky deeps of the rotting swamps? Or does he exist only in the forest of the mind? I'll return shortly with Act Two. Isolated cabin, deep in a semi-tropical swampland. A young man scarred physically and mentally by a tragic accident. A strange girl called only Udine, rescued from being sucked to death in smothering quicksand. And outside, a something that bumps and crawls in the rain-swept night. Listen. Let me go. No! If he's there, I'll get rid of him. You can't stand against the swamp man, Larry. I can try. No, no, it's me he's come for. Don't, don't go out there. Wait. What is it? Listen. Do you hear anything? The rain has stopped. He isn't moving anymore. Damn, all. Well, let's settle this. Larry! Larry! It's all right, Udine. What? Somebody here. Oh, the sun is coming up. Oh, he's afraid of mine. He can't face the day. Oh. Oh. What, what, what is it, Udine? I don't know. I'm burning up. Hold me, Larry. Hold me. You want to, don't you? Yes. I don't know why, but yes. Oh, yes, yes. Oh. Is it because... 
I look like her. Who? Barbara Jane. Maybe. No. Y- yes. I, 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 I don't know. I, I need you so. I need you so. As I need you. As I need you. Oh. It's Larry. It's all right. I went out to get the mud in the swamp water. Uh, Give me water, please. I'll I'll get some fresh. No. From the swamp. I have a glass right here. But but it's stagnant. It'll poison you. No. No. Like this. Give me. Are you you sure? Please. Okay. Here, Uh, Rudinette. Thank you. Oh, that's better. Oh, I feel much better now. I'm worried about that cough. It's nothing. I'm just very dry. You look so flushed. Bring me the other pail. You did bring mud. Looks more like slime to me. Oh, Are you sure? Of course, I'm sure. It's marvelous, Larry. You'll see. It soothes the skin. Look, I rub it into my skin, and I can feel the muscles relax, and then become renewed again. It smooths away every wrinkle. Come here, Larry. Kneel beside me. Don't look at me in the light. Don't be afraid. I see behind the mask, and I'm going to gentle that poor, charred skin. Feel how smooth and gentle. Shut your eyes. And you are in a cave of water. Down in the cool, green depths. Quiet and soulful. Like a cathedral at the silent bottom of a sunstruck lake. I could have this moment last forever. Or choose it for the one to die. Does it feel good? I don't know about this primeval slime. It, it's all in the touch of your hands. Oh, if only it were. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm so tired. Oh, I, I should let you rest. No. Here, let me get a cloth to wash your face. No, leave it up. Don't. Please. Let, let, me, let me feel your brow. No. Oh, Janine, you're running a fever. I'm going to get it to a doctor. I don't need a doctor. Don't leave me alone. Dearest, what is it you're afraid of? I told you. The swamp man? Yes. But that's plain fancy, <laughs> hallucination. <laughs> oh, Danae, who are you? Where do you come from? Are you a husband, a, a, a lover of a family? No. No family, no husband. Nobody looking for me but him. I, I have a lover now. Larry... Three or four. I've got to get a doctor. A doctor. Tarnation, Larry. You can't just bust in here and ask me to go traipsing off into the swamp with you to look at this girl. But she's sick, Dr. Prince. Very sick. It sounds to me like she could have double pneumonia. I can't, son. There's only one of me. Bring her in here. I'll be glad to examine her. I'd have to carry her out of the swamp. You know there's no road into my cabin. Yes, I know it. It's why I can't spare the time. You think this antibiotic will bring the temperature down? Well, I can only hope. I don't dare prescribe anything else sight unseen. Of course, if I knew for a fact that it was the swamp fever, I... You need a blood test for that. Yeah? All right, Doc. I'll bring you back a blood sample myself. <laughs> That's right. You were fixing to be a veterinarian, I forgot. Yeah, a lot of things I was fixing to be once, Doc. There you are, Larry boy. 
That'll be three seventy-five out of ten. Now you take two every four hours. <laughs> you want some water to start off here? Oh, they're not for me, Jeb. Yeah, well now, I didn't somehow expect they was. You don't act like you were sick now. No, I'm not. Jeb, I want to buy a gun. Oh, stuff me for a little. I thought you was plumb set against any sort of firearm. Well, I've changed. Uh, how much is that one, man? This year, 45? Yeah. And a box of shells. Now, what do you want it for? Protection. Oh, well, I reckon living as deep in the swamp as you do, you need it. All right, that'll be, let's see, $85 and $5.20 for the state. It's $90.20 altogether. Okay, here we uh, Is there enough here? A lot, boy. Where'd you get money like that? Well, I've been saving it since I went into the swamp, Jeb. Uh, nothing much to spend it on there. <laughs> Up until the last few days, huh? <laughs> what does that mean? Oh, come on, son. Uh, here, here's a change. I know from the other day that you, uh, you got yourself a woman out there. That's none of your business. Larry, you ain't got nothing but friends around here. I ain't poking into your chicken coop. I just hope she's someone who'll treat you right. And I'm right sorry to hear she's poorly. Well, she got herself caught in the devil's cauldron. I, I had to pull her out. Well, you don't say now. Local girl? I don't know. Any missing hereabouts? Well, not as I've heard tell. Can I... Can I ask her name? Udine. Udine. Yeah, well, that's a kind of farm, I eh? What she look like, Larry? She looks like the spitting image of Barbara Jane. And you found her in the devil's cauldron? Half buried in the quicksand. Larry. Larry, boy, you you sure she's what she seems to be? Got some smokes for me and my buddy? Well, here's an unexpected pleasure. Mr. Larry Drake, the happy hermit. I'll be leaving, Jeb. Good night. Didn't you hear me talking to you, old buddy? Hello, Bubba. Ain't you gonna say hello to old Jess here? You remember Jess Guilford? Hi, Jess. Oh, there, Larry. Excuse me, I was... What's your hurry? Don't you want to visit for a while? There isn't much left to be said between you and me. That's damn right. Not since you killed my sister. It was an accident. Barbara Jane got killed. You escaped. Come on, Barbara. Let me stay out of this, Jess. What you wearing, Larry? Little black paint to hide that pretty face the fire chewed up? Let me pass, Bubba. Maybe you're smart to cover up now you got a new woman with you. You might turn her stomach. Get out of my way. Blind side of death. three. All three of you. Now, don't any of you move a whisker. Now, you shut up, Bubba, and you just, just stay out of what's none of your affair. And Larry, you don't use your hands for nothing more than letting yourself out that door. Oh, no. Well, the going's good. I'm going, Jeb. But why did you tell trash like Bubba about I me? I didn't and... mean to, Larry. He he overheard by accident. Okay. Now, Bubba, you stay away from me. I've taken all from you. I'm going to. <laughs> No, 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 nothing to worry about. How do you feel? Some water, please. That's right here. Thanks, Larry. Mm. That feels better. I feel like getting up for a while. I, I, I've made us some dinner. If you want me to. Oh, what happened to my dress? I, I threw it away. It was all stained and torn. Oh, well, then what am I... I... Brought you a new one from the store. I oh, I hope it fits, and uh, oh, I mean you, you like it. <laughs> you 
bought me a new gown. Well, you have to have something to wear. Oh. Open this dress. I haven't had a new gown for... Oh, Larry. It's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Give me a little time by myself to freshen up and put it on. Oh, you're beautiful. You're so beautiful. Is it because I look like her? Yes. And no. Barbara Jane is dead. You're alive. What is it? Nothing. Larry, I... I'm tired again. Oh, I've kept you sitting here too long in front of the fire. You, no. Oh, you sure cast a spell over me. I didn't realize it had gone out. I'll get some fresh wood. No, darling, I don't need a fire. I just... Please. Is it still raining? Yes. Yeah, our cats and dogs. Oh. So heavy, you can't... Oh. It's, it's dark out. Well, it's been a black day. The night oh. came early. Then so will he... This time he won't wait too late. Who did they listen to me, darling? You're here oh. with me. You're safe. There's no such thing as a swamp man. He's coming. I feel it. He's coming. It's just superstition and folk. No, listen. You see, there's nothing. Listen. Oh! with you as long as I'm here. No, Larry, don't go after me. Oh. I've brought some protection. My friends know you. They him. We'll find out soon enough. Swamp man, if you come for her, you won't get it. <laughs> I'm giving you one last warning. Stay back. <laughs> out of the night and a shot in self-defense. But what good is a gun against a ghoul or a hobgoblin? Creatures of the mind and dark night fantasies are not laid to rest by a bullet. I'll return shortly with Act Three. of strange, blood-chilling monsters the human imagination has dredged up from the depths. The Loch Ness Monster, mermaids, sea serpents, the merciless Lorelei, the inexorable sirens, the poet Keats' immortal La Belle Dame Sans Merci, the lovely lady without mercy who lured kings and princes to a watery grave. But in this story, which is the true menace from the swamp. The swamp man himself or his escaped captive, Udine. Let us return to Larry Drake's confession to find out. I didn't mean to shoot, but I couldn't help myself. Then I saw the shadowy figure stumbling towards me. After the shot, the crazy laughing stopped. I moved up on it very carefully. I could see that it was no swamp man since there were legs dressed in jeans and field boots. Oh. Who are you? Baba. Baba James. Oh. God Almighty, Larry, you, you killed me. What were you doing here? Oh, just, just a joke. I wanted to see what, what kind of woman would give you the time of day. <laughs> the joke's on me. Kill me just like you kill my, my sister. It was an accident, Baba. I told you. Oh, uh, you know what, Frog Face? You better take yourself out of circu- circulation. You're plum accident prone. <laughs> Where's Where's Jim? <laughs> Nothing more I could do for Baba. He was dead. I got a tarp from the lean-to by the cabin and covered him up against the rain. And then I went back to the cabin. Who, Danae? 
What happened out there? Uh, no, no, nothing. Uh, forget about that. All, all that matters right now is to get you to a doctor. No. I'm, I'm too weak, Larry. I, I couldn't make it in this way. Then I'm going for the doctor. No. Don't leave me alone. Oh, oh okay. Okay, Udine. Uh, with the river cresting and all the rain, I probably couldn't get across anyway. Oh, but tomorrow morning, come hell or high water. Let tomorrow wait for its time. Tonight we're still together. Let time wait on us. I never closed my eyes. But all the time we were together, Udine slept a troubled sleep. Her skin hot and dry, her breathing shallow. I took a pulse in the temperature and... What they showed me sent me off at dawn for town. You know, I don't know what the Sam Hill you're up to, Larry. Have you been drinking? No, Doctor. But what do you mean? Well, I don't know about the blood sample. That'll have to be tested. But those other vital signs you described... That's why I'm here to drag you back to see her. Well, it ain't possible... A pulse of under 30, a BP of 60 over 40, flushed and feverish and running a temperature of under 90? Well, she should be cold and clammy. That isn't enough to sustain life, human life anyway. You must have made a mistake. No mistake. I was as careful as I could be. Udine is alive. You can see for yourself when you come. Oh, uh, I shouldn't give in to you, but you, <laughs> you got me intrigued. Can we get across the river? If we leave right now. Okay. Uh, hello? When? Well, can he be moved, Sheriff? Yeah, yeah. Now, look here. You have him lift him in a blanket and handle him like he was partridge eggs. Yeah. Right to the office. I'll be waiting. Well, yeah, Larry, I, I can't go with you now. Now, wait a minute. You said you were... Uh, that was the Sheriff. Down to the levee. Cody William got trapped under a sandbag slide. He's in bad shape. They're bringing him here for me to operate on. How long is that going to take? Well, it could be well on to most of the afternoon. I'll come out to your place as soon as I'm finished. You don't understand. I this understand, is... son, but but I got to take first things first. But you'll surely come. Yeah, I promise. How are you going to find your way into the swamp? I'll pick up Jeb Scanlon to guide me. He knows this country like the back of his hands. Jeff! Jeff! I guess Tom, what ails you, boy? You look down on the ground. Uh, now, where's your sidekick, Bubba? Uh, Bubba. He's dead, Jeff. He's dead. Larry Drake blew a hole in him with a big old forty-five. Lord almighty. Does uh, the sheriff know about this? No. No, I just got to town. I thought I might find him here. Oh, he's down the river. Tress goes by this afternoon around four. Uh, uh, yeah, here's your drink. Oh, thank you. When did all this happen? Last night. Bubba and me. Well, you know, Bubba, he, he figured he was going to bother Larry some about the woman he was supposed to be shacked up with. Uh, we come up on the cabin and the lights was on. And Bubba, he says... I want to give old frog face Larry and his fancy woman some big scare. He just watched me make like old swamp man. And then he started calling, kind of ghostly like, and the next thing I knew. Now, come I, on, boy. Uh, pull yourself together. Uh, Larry, come out on the porch. And he called out. Then he just let rip with that big old cannon. I heard that slug rip right through, Bubba, and I, I took off from the trees like all the devils in hell was on my tail. Oh, you don't know if Bubba's dead. Oh, the way I heard him take it, I don't see how he could be anything else. You didn't stay to find out? No, sir, not me. You just took out, you? Uh, Larry don't know you was with Bubba last night? You know, I wouldn't think it. You see, he come out thinking Bubba was the swamp man, and old Bubba, he's just trying to keep up the fun and all that. Yeah, that Bubba was a card. He just picked himself the wrong poker game this time. 
Sure looks like Larry's got himself mixed up in something mighty strange. Who did I? I'm in bed, Larry. I'm sorry I was gone so long. Can I get you something? What? From the swamp? No. No more poison. The doctor's coming to see you. The doctor can't help me. Just give him the chance. I haven't time. Listen to me, Larry. He's one. I know that now. Who? The swamp man. I can't live in the air anymore. That's ridiculous. That's sheer nonsense. Look at me, Larry. I'm dying. I'm out of my element. Your uh, element? It isn't air anymore. It's water. I have to go back or die. <laughs> if only you could come with me. But he'd never let you. I'd fight him for you. Oh, I suppose you'd try. You love me that much. <laughs> Larry. Yes. The wine we had at dinner last night. Yes. Could you bring a glass and share it with me? Okay, I'll get it. This is no goodbye toast. I'd never let you go. I know. Okay, this is to drink to your staying here till Dr. Prince gets here and has a chance to prescribe for you and make you well. <laughs> so that you and me can live forever afterwards. Drink deep, Larry. My love. To you. Sleep, my love, till I call for you again. I have to leave you now. The water is green and cool, and it washes the skin like ointment. And the moss dampness makes you whole again. You will be so fair. Your skin renewed. Your youth returned. So much for so little. What is a soul worth, after all? Well, quite frankly, I... I think my patient is much more Larry than this mysterious woman. Oh, uh, what's that mean? Well, from all the evidence, no one, save Larry, has seen her. Oh, you, you don't mean she... She don't exist. Well, physiologically, as a doctor, I don't see how she can. In addition to the impossible figures on her vital signs, I got a report on her blood sample. And? I don't know where our veterinarian game warden got it, but that was no human blood. What kind, Ben? Uh, not a biologist or a hemopathologist. Reptile, fish... Not a warm-blooded animal, and certainly not a primate. You think this is some kind of a hoax? Well, I think a boy I loved very deeply because of what he once was is obviously broken psychologically. I think we'd better get out to that swamp and see what tatters of them remain that might be pasted together. Uh, if Jess Tomlin's testimony is right... There ain't many tatters remaining. So this is the end of it. I don't know what only they put in that wine, but I just woke up and she's gone. I intend to follow her now once I finish this. I don't know what I shall find in the Devil's Cauldron. A fight to the death with a swamp man... Reunion with Udine. Peace at last. Or eternal damnation. 
I only know that a moment ago I looked in the mirror and my face is no longer twisted or scarred. The skin is as young and unwrinkled as it was that night so long ago when Barbara Jane and I left the party two days before we were to be married. I will step into the sand and wait to sink while death smooths me over. Uh, maybe there's still time. We better head back for the swamp. Hold the line higher, Jeb. Uh, you ever see anything like that? The old devil's cauldron is boiling like the fires of hell was under it. Lovely all the rain in the high surface table. Trapped swamp gas bubbling to the surface. Yeah, or Larry and old one two locked in combat. Oh, there ought to be some way we could get in there and try to help the boy. You stay where you are. This swamp has bought enough lives in its time. Come daylight, we'll see. My God, we'll... look. What's that? I can't see too good. Hold your lanterns high. Oh. Well, that's a body surface. It ain't Larry. How do you know in this half life? No, he ain't got no legs. That's a swamp man. Or a manatee or some other animal. Do not see. By tomorrow, the currents will have sucked it away. Well, maybe if it is a swamp man, he's the lucky one. Who's to say the woman ain't the one who sucks them dry? Choose them out. Nah, you spend too much time gossiping around the stove, Jim. It could be. That's what the old ones say. A swamp is a woman that drags men down, often her body, in exchange for their souls. <laughs> legend goes. But then, there are so many legends. The classic fabled water sprites called Udine, who could receive human souls by marrying a mortal, la belle dame sans merci, who stole men's souls in exchange for love. Their numbers must be legion. And for that matter, since no one but Larry ever saw her, perhaps Udine was only a figment of the imagination. I leave you to make your choice. I'll be back shortly. One footnote before we part. The word of this story having gotten around, the Okefenokee Swamp is avoided by hunters these days, like the plague. And as a result, the wildlife, left in peace and quiet, breed happily and prolifically once again. So, like Larry and Udine, let's allow them all to rest in peace. Our cast included Jack Grimes, Joan Loring, Ian Martin, Robert Dryden, and Leon Janney. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. <laughs>